Oh, here, buddy. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hey, everybody, this is Tierra Shea, and that's Mike, and we're insert burger pun. That's right. Oh, <laughs> it's a good sound. And today, we're doing something somewhat special. Yes. Isn't that right? As we pour glasses of wine and mugs. Oh. We are going, okay, so today we're going to be ranking the Valentine's Day episodes of Bob's Burgers because Valentine's Day is coming up and we wanted to do that. There you go. It was a little tricky though, I feel like, because there, there were a couple episodes where I wasn't sure if they would count as Valentine's Day episodes. Yeah, I agree. So there were a couple. list is five. Because I was at first, I was just going by anything that had like a Valentine's Day pun in the title. But mm-hmm. then I started looking at stuff that came out around Valentine's Day right. that was also like kind of a romance thing going on. So we're gonna go down through all of them. I I can do mine first. Yes. I can do mine first. So I guess also we should I guess we should also say which episodes we're talking about. Yeah. Because just in case there is any controversy about which are and are not Valentine's Day episodes I have of Bob's five Burgers. On my list. I have five. I think we have the same five. I okay. sure hope so, because that would ruin everything I if we didn't. I have Fuzzy Valentine, yep. Can't Buy Me Math, yep. The Gene and Courtney Show, yep. V for Valendetta, mm-hmm. and Bob Actually. Right. And that's mostly chronological order, I think, anyway. I so that's, yeah. You so know that's, it. that's the episodes that we got to deal with today. I'll start off the list. I don't know. I guess I should preface it with, like, what I was, my qualifications, so, yes, right? Criteria, like, why? Sure. Because for one thing, I think <laughs> uh, the number, the sheer number of times that I've watched most episodes of Bob's Burgers, or at least, like, through season seven, maybe. Mm-hmm. I've watched most of them many, many times. So being able to watch something again for the 15th time without thinking this is, okay, this is getting pretty old and I'm tired (laughs) and I know all the twists and it's not fun anymore. And there are other ones that just stay fun and they really retain that rewatch value. So that was a big one for me. There are also just like other kind of, not random details, but smaller details about the episode and like kind of how it feels, I think, that were also a a pretty big factor in choosing which one is not so great. (laughs) And also what we get to see our characters doing in each episode. So if it felt like a really bland, normal, episode Mm -hmm. i was probably less likely to get into it because what's the fun in that you know like who cares it's you want better gestures that's enough dilly doubt that's enough build up right i'll just i'm just gonna launch into my list here okay so (laughs) my least favorite my number five of five is v for valentine data and i think you saw this coming a mile away (laughs) because for one thing it's the only episode on the list that i didn't remember at all which is a bad sign and then when i found out what the episode (laughs) was i said oh yeah that's the worst one (laughs) like that's that's last on my list for me and yeah what's so it's it's the episode where we meet nat who drives a limo i guess and she has snakes or something and she's in other episodes later on but what's the whole deal is what like jimmy jr didn't want to do a tina thing for valentine's day yeah one of my criteria for my episode is a jimmy jr fuckboy level Mm. meter and this is he scores the highest on this episode probably the highest one right So he's just a jerk, and I guess it's Linda's idea of like, oh, we'll just do fun girl stuff, right? It's a girl, it's a gal, it's basically Galentine's Day from Parks and Rec. And we meet Nat. I'm not the biggest fan of Nat for some reason. I just, it feels like instead of giving her a personality, they just gave her quirks, you know? Like, look at how quirky she is. She's doing so many quirky things, and she's a weirdo, and but (laughs) but she's still kind of likable. And I actually like Nat better in other episodes where Mm -hmm. she appears. But the first time through felt so much like a try hard (laughs) episode at like being endearing and funny, which for me is kind of a hallmark of just late, late stage Bob's Burgers anyway, It just feels like the pieces are there for the most part, but I don't get the connection and I don't get the laughs. It just feels like, oh, okay, it's empty now. It has no soul. (laughs) Don't worry, everybody. I disagree completely. And when it's my turn, we're going to get a lot of that love. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can give Scorpio love, but I will never give uh, Nat love ever. <laughs> Stay, stick, or keep an eye out for our brand new Shira podcast we called should. the Sheer Rats. Ed, Ed Sheer Rats. <laughs> no, I don't want to be Ed. 
Well, neither is Ed. Ed is like a mascot, and it's not Ed Sheeran. It's Ed Sheeran, but as a rat, <laughs> who's magic. That's enough talking about that one. I'm, I don't want to talk about that one anymore. <laughs> That's okay. I'll talk about it later. Number four on my list in the rankings of the best Valentine's Day episodes of Bob's Burgers is Can't Buy Me Math. It really just came down to the fact that I don't think this one has a ton of rewatch value for me. For whatever reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, for one thing, it's a, um, it's very much one of those episodes where Tina's just being a dummy, plain and simple. Everything is very obvious the whole time, but she gets caught up in her fantasies to the point where it's annoying. Like, it's not cute or teenagery or funny. It's just, and in case you forgot, it's the one where she and Daryl are pretending to date so that when they break up, the cuteness of their double nerd factor will mean that they can both date the people that they want because yes. other people are jealous and awful and possessive. They have the whole dating chart thing. Right. They have a very weird, manipulative, awful, sociopathic way oh to uh, <laughs> date the people they want to date. And then those people find out about it after the fact. And they're like, right. you know what? That's manipulative, manipulative and awful. And I can't believe... You did that when you could have just... But they fix it that same day. They fix it the same day because there are no stakes. <laughs> and I guess I don't get a ton of big laughs out of this episode either. See, what is even the B story in this episode? We have Tina fake dating Daryl and not learning math. They yeah, don't do and math. And Bob and Linda are doing Valentine's Days. And oh, the, the advent calendar. Yeah. And he does the stripping the strip on the piece. table. Mm-hmm. Right. Which was... Where he's like out of breath coming out of the door. See, that was, a, that was a very funny scene the first time I saw it. And I was like, oh, that's a funny concept. And it's always funny when, when Bob has confidence because it's a change of pace for him. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of fun. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. He's, he's into it. He's enthusiastic. Yeah, he's, he's doing like, stuff. You'll get a strip tease like you never Yeah, no, like that's a great... That's a great little bit. And that's a bit that feels like uh, the dialogue feels like it's from an earlier season of Bob's Burgers when they it sounded more natural and they edited it, a lot of crosstalk and weird stuff like that. No, so, okay, so with that B-story in mind, it's, it's, it's okay. It's fine. I definitely don't hate the episode at all, but it definitely, it's not, it's not good enough. We got some heavy hitters in here. And can't buy me math is just not punching at its weight. So okay. it's it's out of there. But next up we have now. Okay, so third place and second place were definitely Uh-oh. that was the controversial one for me. Did you have to flip a coin? First place was easy enough. No, well I flipped a coin in my brain, kind of, I guess. But yeah, third for me is the Gene and Courtney show. And I guess this is the one. That's maybe not necessarily a Valentine's Day episode specifically, it but is. it came out. Is it? Does it happen around Valentine's yeah, Day on the show? Yeah, because they're doing the Valentine's Day roses, and that's what Tina's doing. The carnations. Carnations. Oh, okay. Well, then, great. It, it does make it on the list for every reason. <laughs> but there's not a lot of that. It's the B story, right? It gets pushed aside. And I do love the flower market. But yeah. that's not the meat here. That's not what's really... The, the main thing is the Gene and Courtney dynamic. And for once, and the only time ever in the show, we see them having chemistry and yeah. getting along, even though it's mostly just in a work capacity right like they really only have that chemistry because they're both good at making annoying song lyrics basically (laughs) like that's the connection but that said i think it's also one of my favorite gene episodes ever probably why because he's still himself it's not like he's not it's not like the character has strayed from that identity but he's actually like likable and somewhat interesting and for me that's that's rare with Gene. Like he's not one of my favorite characters in general. <laughs> and sometimes his 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 shtick gets pretty stale and he's just making 80s references and no one responds. It's always a bad show on a sitcom a, a bad sign on a sitcom show where you have a character who's supposed to say funny stuff but then there's no dialogue following that up. They just move on to the next thing. And it happens with Gene so often because he's just giving throwaway jokes that they don't care about. I actually like him in this episode okay because for one thing, we have this weird, it's one of very rare episodes where there's some sort of continuity. Oh, we actually know that he and Courtney have a past right. and it's kind of messed up and weird and awkward. Did and even Doug in this episode? Yeah, yeah, because Doug is like, 
hey, mister, you oh, better right. not mess with her because we've been down this road before, which I also like. I think and that's a fun Jean scene. And something really cute about, like, oh, I like When I hold her hand, it feels like we're holding hands for the, the very first time, and it's like the third time. <laughs> <laughs> and they share a pudding cup. And, uh, yeah, once once they're hanging out there and, and kind of dating, they get off with the morning announcements and almost lose their spot. Right. they lose, yes. And, sure. um... And it's great. It's it's kind of a it's it's kind of a weird. It's kind of a classic trope in rom coms, but like s- slightly subversive rom coms where the two people don't get to end up together. Right. One of the standout examples would be like uh, Roman Holiday with Audrey Hepburn and is that Gregory Peck in that movie? I don't totally. think it's Gregory. Some other guy. But anyway, it's like oh no, it, it feels like a rom com up until the end when they're like oh no, but we actually can't get together and we'll never see each other again in our lives. Yeah, the lesson um, learned. I put one of the criteria for mine as well was the lesson learned in the yeah. episode. And one of like what I put was heartbreak is a part of life, and sometimes it's good to separate work and love. <laughs> But it's true. But it's true, she and um, it's ap- it's applicable to the episode. And the fun part is that it is a little bit. There's a little bit of unrequited action going on too, because there's that moment where they're Let like, "We have to decide what yeah. do we what do we care more about doing this show, this stupid show thing, one more time, or our relationship." Yeah, Gene mm-hmm. wants to keep the relationship going, but he, Courtney doesn't. So there's that nice mismatch. Um, and I was gonna say that the uh, the last song they do together that Gene makes up and he's like this is going to be the song where I'm like actually profess that I wanted to keep the relationship going it's it's one of very few times in the whole show right (laughs) (laughs) but it's actually a fun emotional moment and a fun emotional musical moment which Mm -hmm. there aren't a lot of in this show like most of the time the the songs are fun or just like or just like a cool song you know they got into like more musical style stuff later on but they're rarely emotional (laughs) or like any kind of moving and that one at least was like oh it's relevant to the plot and it has emotional impact and it works really well right I find myself Um, going oh every time I hear it. Yeah, and it even has that really fun joke where Gene's teacher is yeah, like... Yeah, that boy's got a crush on me. boy's got a crush on me. It's just... I mean... It's got to do something. Bob has a crush on her. Her cable's out, right? That's yeah. the whole... Th- Wait, no. That's the same... That's supposed to be the same teacher? It's Jacobson, right? Really? I think it's just because the voices change for that character, yeah. so like... Anyway. She's a hot one. Thanks. I think I've, I think I've said enough about, <laughs> about that episode. All right, number two. Number two is, and I don't know, I don't know if this is a, if anyone would agree with this or people get mad, but number two for me is Bob actually. Yeah, I know. And here's the thing. (laughs) In terms of Valentine's Day episodes, or even just Bob's Burgers episodes in general, it's definitely one of the more cinematic ones ones yes. right and like obviously the title yes we know that it's referencing love actually we got we get that, that um it's not great but <laughs> <laughs> but what's so interesting is the episode actually feels more serious i even wrote down that it kind of felt like big budget even though it's just <laughs> it's not it's a you know it's an episode of a cartoon <laughs> but it feels like they put a decent amount of work into it and like oh we're gonna have our fun our, our different plot threads intertwining we're going to get to develop all these different stories and just instead of just the A story and the B story. But it's also very show-offy in that way. Yeah. Like, it's it's very much like we need to have our big dramatic moments in this episode. So we're just going to do stuff. And I, I do think that's why we get a lot of the development with regular size Rudy and Louise and Chloe Barbash. Even though I'm happy about the regular size Rudy mm-hmm. sp- storyline i enjoy it i think it's fun i think it's cute that they try to do a thing with louise there and everything but at the same time yeah i don't know it, it is pretty rewatchable well i do hate the tina jimmy jr <laughs> story because <laughs> it's Chili nothing groups. it's nothing it's just they smooch because when she's on stilts and that's it like they they are terrible together and it's a really bad relationship even just as a friendship but they still get this weird nice moment what happens with bob and linda what are they doing this one it's the hip-hop one. Oh, uh, i'm gonna talk about it don't worry that is an okay resolution oh we also get the um roller skates man does he have a name yeah no, he I and a mermaid just... do something the oh, unicycle shell, mermaid yes. they have I a thing 
So I appreciate the ambition of the episode and the scope and the fact that each each little tiny story is at least serviceable. Serviceable to pretty good. I also like the weird kind of pointless one-off edition of, um, oh no, what's her name? Italian cook lady. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the substitute. What's her name? Oh, no. I'm going to look it up. Okay. But I wanted to mention her very briefly because her shape and personality and the fact that she's Italian. She just kept reminding me of um, Sarah Gina, which is a, an art house deep cut. <laughs> but Sarah Gina shows up in eight and a half and she's a great character. And um, John Waters, famous director of... Isabella. All those, all those movies with Divine because they were buddies. He once said that Sarah Gina from Eight and a Half kind of felt like Divine and Edith Massey mushed together. <laughs> There's two performers that he worked with, and I think it's great. So she reminded me of that fictional character, and I thought it was kind of fun, even though, yeah, even Gene gets his own storyline, you know? Like, there's just, everybody gets a thing. Yeah, the Bob hip-hop, mm, well... <laughs> Yeah, I won't. Yeah, I won't step on any toes there. I don't want to get into it prematurely. I think that's about it. I think that's about all I can say about Bob. Actually, is it is definitely a good episode, and it's one I like watching. But yeah, it's not going to make the top of the list because my fuzzy Valentine, of course, which was the show's first Valentine's Day episode, is my favorite one of the Valentine's Day episodes. I think it was season three, right? Yeah, season three. three. I think it's the first one they did because the first season was super short, and the second one, I don't think they even bothered to my knowledge <laughs> i think there's they're getting a hand on like holidays right and which ones to capitalize on and which ones to, they, they didn't know yet that thanksgiving was the big bob's burgers holiday yeah. <laughs> apparently like they they really put a lot of eggs into that basket so to speak i guess eggs are not a big thanksgiving thing are they no no i don't i don't think so (laughs) except as part of bread and stuffing my fuzzy valentine it's the best one for a lot of reasons okay (laughs) for one it had the novelty factor of oh this is the first time they're doing this stuff and it was also one of the first times i think that they kind of delved a little bit more into bob and linda's relationship and especially early days and like them meeting and everything because yeah that's a lot of it is flashbacks to or misremembered flashbacks to bob and linda's first valentine's day or their first anniversary or whatever it was supposed to be and the whole thing is yeah it's a fun little hunt down the thing episode where they're looking for the what love testometer dr loves love testometer right yes. at different bars around town <laughs> we're playing hooky the kids are playing hooky the kids are playing hooky from the school but no they're i mean they're also just very very good little things that make this one great for example uh it's raining the whole time yes. which i really like we very rarely get to see weather any weather or ocean avenue or anything in a different setting other than just blue skies kind of nice and fine you know um and given also wearing a different outfit as well she's wearing like a a valentine's day pink sweater oh yeah 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 yeah. it's a good mom sweater it's nice that it's different for one thing but it's also just kind of cozy because not only is it raining but they're also in a car most of the episode which is just very fun and of course they commented on it at some point where they're like oh let's get some hot chocolate first like (laughs) it's it's rainy out and we're driving around all day and it has the buckle it up song which is maybe the best song in the series (laughs) you want to do it you think we can do it you can you start it and i'll join it buckle it up buckle it up buckle Buckle it up or you'll die die. that's it that's pitch perfect thank you (laughs) so i I do that a few times i underline that in my notes for this episode we get uh a fun grazielda scene (laughs) i think it's the first time that we actually like understand what grazieldas are right or get any context for that but outside all of that stuff i think it just has some fun i think it has some fun twists too because bob is genuinely trying to do something nice he ruins it which is in character for him but in character for linda she ends up just saying oh well whatever you tried to do a nice thing and you blew a bunch of money on it so like that's enough that's and that's what we see later on too with is this the episode where they establish that bob's really bad at valentine's day and he just does heart-shaped stuff or is that in yes. a later episode no, that's this one because it okay. starts with him making trying to make heart-shaped pancakes pancakes right right the kids get the rejects yeah so with that context it's really nice because yeah it's not that linda wanted the perfect gift or anything right mm-hmm. that would be silly that's not in character 
for her at all, really. It's just like, oh no, you you made an effort and you actually tried to do a thing instead of just the laziest thing possible. The kids do want to help out for real, even though they're also being selfish by like, we don't want to go back to school. So for them too, still in character, but stretched a little bit and we get to see a side of them that we don't usually. So it's a nice little new perspective on a lot of our characters. It's a cozy episode to watch yeah, visually. This really steps up. Um, like, we're going to make this happen. Louise is doing stuff. They almost break into a car. Jean almost <laughs> throws, a, throws a rock through a car. Yeah, just so much to like. We get to see different places around town as well. We get to see a lot of different bars. And was it Pickles? Do they go, go to Pickles, they go to pickles right? Pickles. They go to Pickles. <laughs> Of course they go to Pickles. That goes in the butt bank. And aren't all the dancers at Pickles, they're like warming up, right, at yeah. Pickles? But aren't aren't they just like normal looking they're, people? Yes. It's not like, because they can draw like model handsome. They're those kinds of characters in the show. But Gen- these guys. But those, but like also they're, they're at Pickles during the day. And so maybe it's the, the B squad that's going on right now. Well, but no one's there. I assumed it wasn't open. So they were having rehearsal or something. Uh, rehearsal for the strip club. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. And that's it. That's that's what I got. I love it. That's what I got for those. Those are my definitive rankings that no one can argue with at all. Of course not. So what do you think? Do you want to jump right into yours? Do you have any uh, extra notes? <laughs> No, I'm happy. Before we move I on. love I love your list. It's I wasn't surprised by your least <laughs> by favorite. <any> of <laughs> Nor was I surprised by your favorite. Okay, that's fair. So I think that's a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I know you're mine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna go worst to best like you did. Right. Obviously. Okay, yes. cool. So my number five is Can't Buy Me Math. I think it it does chalk up to rewatchability. Mm-hmm. Also because I really like the movie with Nick. I just like the the movie it's based off of. And I like Can't Buy Me Love was on those ones. I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is also a, a Beatles song. Sure. <laughs> Love that Beatle. And um, there's a remake of that movie with Nick Cannon in it. And he plays the nerd. And so I just can't get over that part of the the episode but i do love there's a there's like a um, jocelyn does a thing where after daryl says tina belcher and jocelyn says i wish somebody would say my name long like that jocelyn jocelyn (laughs) that's one of my favorite things that jocelyn ever does and so it being in that episode does give it points for sure for sure okay and um, my Jimmy Jr. fuckboy level is low on this because he was the one who got, like, screwed over, technically, yeah. in that. And my lesson learned from that is you can't force love connections right. and you got to put yourself out there sometimes. Okay. So that's, <laughs> that's that. There you go, yeah. Okay, so number four is the Gene and Courtney show. Mm. It's low because I don't like Courtney very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like her. But I like that Jean likes her, and I love the scene where they are like, oh, what happened? Are we, oh, we're holding hands. I didn't even notice. Or, oh, yeah. are we kissing? And I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> and I love when Bob is call, trying to call around to find um, flowers, and he's mm. disguising his voice. He's like, I'm one of the last living carnations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Tom Carnation or whatever. And he's like yeah. doing all the math to like get all the flowers. <laughs> and yeah, so it's another episode where he has to end up shelling out a lot of money for something that he, if he had just, you know, right, got them earlier, he would have been fine. Yeah. And then yeah, the choosing between love and career. It was so sad when Courtney was when they answered at the same time, and she said to to keep doing the show. Right. Right. Heartbreak. <laughs> but I like that that the the episode ended with kind of heartbreak and Jean being like, "I'll be okay." And so will you, people watching this episode. Oh, Don't okay. Worry. That's how I took it as that song. He was like singing to other people, like the people watching the show. Right. Oh, well, yeah. Right. Obviously. Right, right. And that's why you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> four, right? Yeah, that's that four. That was four. Okay. Did you ever do that? Did your school ever do that where you can buy roses for people? There were carnations. I don't think we were supposed to give them to anybody. That would have been too suggestive. I think you could give them to like 
teachers or parents, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? They didn't do the thing where they, like, they went around and, like, the classes and somebody, like, Tina, like, they would dress up or, like, they would hand out no, I don't and think so. I also don't remember. I mean, we definitely did, like, Valentine's, Valentine's, mm-hmm. you know, with the shoebox and, like, here you go, and candy and stuff. I love that. But I think they all had to be, like, pretty normal, you know? They all had to be, like, pretty standard or else he were going to get a, a talking to. <laughs> we had that. We had the exactly what Tina was doing, that whole, oh, like in Mean Girls, where they're like, here's candy canes and stuff. Where you yeah, can, like, write we might have done candy name. canes. <laughs> I don't think I got them often. Oh. Or, yeah, which is so sad to say out loud. And I wrote it in my notes, so I was like, looking back, <laughs> I realized that I wasn't someone who was be- who like people were buying roses oh for. no but that's okay because now i'm an adult and i can buy my own roses <laughs> <laughs> i don't think the roses were the <laughs> the main thing or carnations anyway okay so number three is my fuzzy valentine i did have hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i like it um i <laughs> Um, it has another uh, line that I appreciate, which is Barbara Bunkley, but like said with anguish. And it's not, like Barbara <laughs> Bunkley is like something I say if I mess something up now. Oh. I love Barbara Bunkley. <laughs> I love that Linda does the speed dating thing. Oh, yeah. That is Sergeant, that episode. Yeah, with Sergeant, Sergeant Bosco. Bosco. Yeah. So in your, what, what would you like to do? Like how Linda is saying we should just talk about the things that you do like and that type of stuff. And Bosco is like, no, you should talk about what you're bad at and what, what your terrible habits are. Mm. What, which approach would you prefer? Right. Well, I think one of the strengths of speed dating not that I've, <laughs> I don't know where who does that still, but um, but I think I don't know. I think it would be much more fun if it was in the context of this is very low stakes, you know, like nobody's taking it too seriously, and no, we're not looking for lifetime soulmates, you know. So in that case, it can be the most useless stuff, you know. Who cares? Just right. talk about anything at all. The most superficial stuff <laughs> would be a okay. So I think that'd be more fun. Even though I guess everybody in the show prefers the other thing, right? Right. That's like the the twist, I guess. I feel like I picture speed dating being like the first week of a conversation on Tinder, just like mm. in person. Okay. Yeah. Very quickly. Very quickly. Yes. Very speedy. <laughs> um, another aspect of this episode that I like is that Ron has he's like the hero, kind of. Ron, yeah. Yeah. Right. He yes. like tell, he's like. Hugo is wrong for keeping this away from you. So yeah. here's a copy of our list of places that we're going because Hugo knows where the, or like is going to the, where the love testometer is. And he doesn't want to tell Bob because Bob is getting it for Linda, whom he loves. Mm. What do you not like about it? This is spot three. I feel like it needs to have yeah a balance. I don't like, I always cringe at the part where Linda grabs Bosco's gun. Yes. Yeah. That's a little much for me where I'm like, girl, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, please don't. <laughs> um, and then it's just another, it feels like Bob is just being kind of cheap with his wife in this episode. Mm. Like openly, especially at the Graziella store. It's another part where I cringe because he, mm. they're like, oh, here's this one. It's $250. And he's just like, oh, can I see your cheap one? Like you don't describe a gift that you want to get for your wife as cheap even if you want the least expensive one you don't uh, say let me get your cheap one for my wife mm, like that's i just don't like but that doesn't stuff. he end up spending more than that anyway yeah but that's because he's dumb it's because he's committed i have <laughs> committed to his false memory of not even with the chick that he thought yeah but he feels it for linda sure it's all about linda <laughs> yeah so he basically gets praise for <laughs> misremembering this thing yeah and it's the thought i mean yeah the lesson here is that it's not all about the gifts and that no. thought that counts and the people who are bad at remembering things and scheduling as is elaborated on in the car episode yes. can do something at least it's better than the hip-hop dancing which one do you think she liked more me no linda which one did she, which gift did she like? Did she like the crazy random gift that had nothing to do with her past? Or did she like that Bob did a 15 second vaguely oh, hip hop dance? That. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> but which one was better? Probably the dance. Because it had more people and it was music. What exactly was hip hop about the dance though? Okay, so let me get to that. Which is lovely because that's my number two. 
Oh, no. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Bob actually won a primetime Emmy Award. Ah, for what? For the episode. But what what was the category? Look it up. <laughs> you looked it up already. I wrote down this note and it didn't. I didn't want you to ask me to elaborate. Was it just like best written episode? I wrote down five it... primetime Emmy Awards. So <laughs> if you want more, you're gonna need to crack open a book or something. I don't know. A book, the Emmy book. <laughs> So, Bob actually is my second favorite, I think. Basically, like you said, it's it's an episode that everyone has something to do. Like, Tina's having her chili poops. Louise is doing, having the issue with Rudy. Jean is, like, having an affair with dark chocolate. And Bob and, 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 and Teddy are taking a last-minute dance class. Linda is dealing with Miss Selbo and her breakup. Everyone mm. is occupied. Mm-hmm. Everyone is occupied and we check in on them periodically and separately and together, which is neat. I don't like that Bob, it's another episode of Bob doing something last minute. He's <laughs> gonna get praise for it regardless. <laughs> like, just, like, take a freaking class, watch it, like, watch a video, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> he was watching an ep- a video, remember? Yes, sure. <laughs> last minute. And so Teddy tells him, like, let's go take a dance class of the mm. thing. And I love the pun that the lady says when they come in. They're like, oh, the the, um, <laughs> the ballroom teacher's gone. She waltz right out of here. Just kidding. She died. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. But it's, can- yeah, the class is canceled. The only class that's coming up next is, dun da 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 hip hop. Yeah. And obviously the people in the writer's room saw the video on YouTube of the lady, the hip hop lady, right. dragging her leg and wearing her pants low. And they just animated her and made her real. Wait, they made her animated? <laughs> opposite. The opposite of that. They made the opposite and gave her a son. And Flip swipe fudge. Thank you. I'm so glad you said it because I definitely can't. Peep my feet. <laughs> Pete, my feet my feet that's hip hop I really I laugh so hard I still laugh at that part but Bob and Teddy are in it and just drag it down for me because I know they're not paying attention they're not having fun <laughs> or at least I mean Teddy is maybe but Bob just doesn't want to be there and mm-hmm. so he wouldn't have to be there if he had done his video been there and, earlier yes. <laughs> And so, meanwhile, um, I like I do like this episode because we get to see a softer side of Louise. I feel, but even though he, she is pretty soft all the time, but to see her particularly soft about her and herself and her own emotions, I'm like, oh my gosh, Louise, you're so confused. Mm. Do you like a boy? Are you sad that he doesn't like you? Oh. Or that like that was the part where it just seemed that she was sad because he didn't like her. We get the Rudy Louise kiss. Hmm. Everyone gets a kiss except Gene this episode. Well, he kisses a, a wooden spoon. Yes. Everyone yes. else gets a kiss, including Roller Skate. No, no, no. Doesn't Gene get a kiss on the cheek from Italian lady? Well, not, I feel in, like he does. not in the kiss, not in like the kiss compilation part where ah, he's, right, kissing, he's right. kissing a, a spoon. Right. But I do like that Gene has, when he first tries the dark chocolate they make, he has like a, a flash forward of his entire life with this Italian woman. And I think this also solidifies the fact that he really likes voluptuous and curvy women. You or know? man. And men. Sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure, sure. But we had the the mermaid lady on Mutiny. We have Courtney. No. <laughs> she, I mean, compared to her friends. Courtney's like a string bean. Compared to her friends, she's compared larger. Compared to Rupa and what's the other friend's name? And this lady. And this lady. And Alex. And Alex. Yeah, you're right. Alex. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yay. And uh, is that it? I guess that's all the love interests. Yeah. <laughs> He's and you meet Chloe Barbash for the first Chloe time. Chloe Barbash is there. Yep. She's great. She, oh no, what's his name? She's like, Rudy's not the only person who got me weeds, Louise. You see these? <sighs> these are from something. Kevin Ishihara. Ishihara. <laughs> <laughs> he juggled three Beanie Babies. <laughs> three. <laughs> so... Yeah, I love Chloe Barbash. I am not her. I know it in my heart, and that's okay. Um, Jimmy Jr. fuckboy level is out at a two because this is like one of the first kind of Valentine's episodes that we see him actively seeking her out mm. and like being like, "Don't you know we're doing something for Valentine's Day? What yeah. are you talking about? Of course we're going to be doing the sky kiss, and I want to do it in front of everybody, right? And show everybody that I choose you to be my Valentine's versus." 
all the other times it's <laughs> her seeking him out and wanting yes. attention from him. So yeah. that's right. a change of pace. Okay. But also a good look for Jimmy Jr. Because all the other times I want to slap him in the face. <laughs> but not in the fun Louise way. Right. I want to slap the list right out of him. Mm. Just kidding. I can't slap a kid. Not My even a fictional this, kid. Not even a fictional kid. <laughs> lesson for this episode. Embrace the messiness. Open your heart to new things and people. Okay. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah. You're going to uh, kiss that slow man. <laughs> <laughs> I love Louise. When she says that, he's the slowest person in the world. He's the slowest world. runner. Great. <laughs> Rudy's not a big boy. He's the regular size. <laughs> so, yeah, I love Louise's, like, rant to Chloe Barbash because it just shows how much she cares about him. Right. And how, like, whether he be a friend or something more, like, she actually does ride hard for her friends and mm. will stick up from that for them. Like, when they're not listening or where they're not around. Which is cute. Yeah, for sure. She's definitely a friend you want in your corner. Okay, my number one. <laughs> Are you ready? It's V for Valendetta. I'm disgusted. Whatever. That's awful. I like it because as a single woman, uh, I think that it makes me happy because it's... It... Uh, Shut <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. No, go ahead. Girl go. power on 16. Like, go, go, yeah. Tell, yeah, go I, for it. <laughs> well, well, it's an intro to Nat, whom I love. Nat is just a, like I said, I think I've said it before, but she's just a Swiss Army knife of a character. She has a lot going on. She has a line for everything. She has a joke for everything. And that's fine because I want to laugh when I'm watching the show and whenever she's on screen I do and sometimes yeah she's a little over the top like when she had to cr- like climb back through to the front seat of the limo and she tries to climb through the window and she gets stuck that was a little much but just the fact that she's like a kindred spirit for Louise is amazing she's like Nat you sit next to me and I mean forever and we get the girl power jam song very short but I love it <laughs> I don't remember it at all <laughs> this is a girl power jam Okay. It's good. We have the stink bomb. We have just, I don't know. They just get to go around different places while Bob and Jean just literally are hanging from the sky. Being oh, that's the that trip. one. Yeah. The story, I think the story with the women carry it, carry the episode for all the way to the top for me. Right. Because I get to go get makeovers. They are dancing in the fountain, which I love. You get to see the little animation. Another Fellini reference. Wow. Sure. Sorry. Go ahead. Fellini. <laughs> Jimmy Jr. fuckboy level is at a 10 because I think that's another reason why I have this up here, but the the, the freaking sheer audacity of this kid in this episode hmm. that they wrote. Like, fuck Jimmy Jr. Literally fuck that kid. Yeah. You remember what he did? I've seen this episode once. I I do. I know he's mean. He, <laughs> okay, so Tina gave Jimmy Jr. a picture frame with a picture of them in it mm. and was like here like i'm expecting you know to be your valentine and yada 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 right but jimmy jr had been talking to becky who just got her braces off and is miss thang now she's mm. cute now because her braces are gone mm-hmm. so jimmy jr had been like openly talking to becky and then asked her to be his valentine instead of tina and took the picture of tina and jimmy jr out of the picture frame that tina made and put a picture of becky in it and hung it in his locker that's fucked up. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's so good. No bueno, no bueno. And then is like rude to Becky on the date itself. It kind of breaks <laughs> up with her at the date. <laughs> and then when Tina's there, he's like, well, I'll date you now, I guess. Ah. Uh, like, mm. open. What a douchebag. <laughs> Versus we have the sky kiss, Jimmy Jr., in the previous one. Right, right. Where we never know what we're going to get with this coupling, and it's awful, and I wish they'd stop pushing it on us. And <laughs> I really wish they would, like, have a definitive moment where Tina's like, I am over this boy. Yes, I am boy crazy, but I'm, like, over this boy particular, so that way she can be more boy crazy, right? Well, they tried to do that in one of the worst episodes of the series. Which one was uh, that? Where she's posing as a boy to oh, try yeah, out to be in Boys so for many. Now. I don't watch that one a and lot. The, and the, the lesson of that one, which they force onto us because they have a song about it, is that Tina feels okay about, like, being into a bunch of boys, which, yes, problem 
zero, <laughs> zero of the boys that she's talking Never. about wanting to touch physically and get in there have any chemistry, affection, willingness to spend any amount of time with her, especially in a romantic capacity. So it's a weird, like, non-consensual boy yeah. crazy. Anyway, <laughs> so they tried to do that. They tried to have her moan of self-actualization. But you're right. With Well, they've even tried to do it with Jimmy Pesto, right? Where she's like, you know what? I don't need him. Even in the first, isn't it Sheesh Cab Bob? When, yeah. okay, she still has the moment with Jimmy Pesto, but she's like, oh, it's before he shows up. And she says to Bob, she's like, I don't need Jimmy to make this Jimmy Jr. Yeah, to make this perfect. You already this. have. Like, I, but I, I don't need But I need more it. of just, like, how she's always fawning over him and just hoping that she, that he pays attention to her. And then... Well, yeah, they keep they keep rewinding. They keep yes. regressing. Yes. And it's and very frustrating. They'll toge- like, they'll be together and then not be... Like, <laughs> we'll, at the end of the episode, they're, like, kissing or holding hands. And then the next episode he doesn't even want to be around her. And I'm like, wait, yes. what happened? Yeah. What is they've, going on? They've made it clear many, many, many times that Jimmy Jr. is only interested out of like spite or jealousy or some horrible negative impulse like i at some at some point that stops being fun for an animated comedy show (laughs) at some point that just starts being frustrating and like realistic in a way (laughs) that's not fun (laughs) but i will say i think that they had to do that for v for vendetta or whatever valentine valentine (laughs) Detta, yeah sure right because you know the whole premise of that episode was right yeah and who else was it going to be were they really going to establish a brand new boy character who's yeah. a jerk no they they're just to gonna really use make him like a yeah. big jerk that time so it could be like all women attack all women <laughs> calling all women get in the limo we're gonna do this right now right this guy fucking did this yeah and that's why we have to do that and i'll smell you in hell oh that thing you right know, i did that yeah that's the script that's what they said in the episode yeah that was it so there you go that's my list. Ta-da! And I'm sticking to it. Confetti. Well. Before we go, there is a new um, Valentine's Day episode coming up. What was the title? Romancing the Beef, Romancing I think. Romancing the Beef. I think okay. so. So you're going to guess what it's going to be about, and I'm going to guess what it's going to be about, and we'll see who's closest. Yeah. So it's going to be about the meat dealer. What's his name? Oh. Their beef dealer. Here comes the beef Dominic? Right no, no, not counter. the fake one. Oh. The real one who shows up in one episode... And the dogs eat the meat, remember? The meat meat episode. Yes. I don't know. I feel like it's something with a D. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to be about that guy. And something's going on in his life and he needs a pick-me-up. And Bob's going to very reluctantly have to step in, step in and be like, you know what? You are important. I don't really know you at all, but you bring us meat and that makes people happy (laughs) (laughs) and they're going to go on a wacky adventure around town and we're going to see some of his other customers as well as for the b story i think well it has to be about the kids Mm -hmm. right because linda's going to be the one who encourages bob to go out on the adventure she's like no bobby go I don't, I'm fine. I don't need my, that's, that's Linda. Exactly. And the kids, it won't be at school. That's boring. It's going to be a Valentine's Day party. Extracurricular. We get to see another kid's house. It's going to be Courtney's house. That's what's going to be going on. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Courtney's going to be with some other guy. And, Mm -hmm. and Gene decides, oh no, not even that he's angry, but he's like forced to feel feelings about it. And suddenly Tina and Louise have to be like the support group Mm -hmm. who get in there and they're like, okay, okay, it's fine. Like we're going to be your wingmen and we're going to get you hooked up with some other girl just to show up Courtney and it's going to be great and it's going to be fine. And then he very awkwardly tries to act like he cares about someone else. (laughs) For the rest of the party. Is it going to be Dottie Minerva? Um, it's going to be girl number three. <laughs> that would be the best callback. Like, just bring back girl number three and never, like, she tries to say her name and we never, never, no, we'll we'll never we get never it. get it. Ever, ever. And that's it. That's all I got for my pitch. You're doing so much better than me because as soon it. as you started going, I was like, I don't even know what it's going to, I don't even know what, it, I think it's going to be about romancing the beef. So, like, that can mean... 
so much. Like, what if it's a Gail Frond episode? What if that's what's going on? They're trying to romance them with with, with beef, beef. With like a dinner, like they have to make a a great dinner between Frond and and uh, Gail. And then mm. the story is maybe either Jean or Louise centric. You're probably right. Because we've had so many Tina Valentine's Day uh-huh. stuff, we're we're kind of over that. Maybe it's Louise's turn. Maybe we'll get some more Rudy and some Louise. Probably not. Mm. Maybe some Teddy. Of course, some Teddy overbearing Teddy touching stuff. That was the one I wasn't sure whether to include. Was uh, the Helen Hunt? Is that what it's called? That episode was that about? Val- oh, it was just a match making me. Yeah, but it also came out like right on Valentine's oh, Day or it? right around like the week huh. of or something. So, mm. <laughs> I like that one. Anyway, what's the rest of your your pitch? What happens mm. in the episode? What's going to happen in the episode? Bob is going to run out of beef, and he's going to have to romance the guy from the deli, take him out on a date. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, because things are going bad with Tony, man. Things are real bad. and <laughs> I'm so sick of Tony his and dance. his dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so that was gonna happen and um linda is going to be trying to set teddy up or like do like a makeover for teddy for a date ta-da romancing the beef it's way too much eyeliner <laughs> yes and he starts sweating and he looks like a raccoon oh <laughs> teddy <laughs> I think I would be happy with either of those. I think that would be okay. I think it would be par for the course. We'll find out in two weeks. Two weeks, maybe. Something like that. But until then, <laughs> or until some other time. Stay classy, San Diego. Wow. I know. Uh, as soon as I said it, <laughs> we'll cut it Blue out. Blue Steel, Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just stay out of my room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is Tierra with Insert Burger Pun. <laughs> I thought that was it. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> well, it is now. <laughs> goodbye. Bye.